Oh, wow. A long day. Delicious. Oh, and hello, folks. I am the one, the only hobo Tom. I'm as you can tell by the thumbnail. This is kind of my somewhat Thanksgiving special. I want to thank everyone who's left a comment. And if you leave your comment, you get your name read. Just like Christopher Sumetra. And I probably butchered that last name. You, sir, you should be crawling back to your bed after eating probably way too much turkey. Ashley, to answer your question, sir, kind sir, thank you for your question. Um, I use WWE 2K17. I'm still on the old PlayStation 3. And you, too, can check out my happy drunk skimming from the Daytona Beach Bonfight League. I just posted that video, so that should be up there somewhere. And I'm going to be doing another video for Christmas Eve. I have my Christmas Eve matches planned. I have Christmas Day matches planned. New Year's Eve matches, which is the tournament, the intergender tournament. And I have my New Year's Day matches planned. So I have a whole bunch of stuff going on. And I get paid tomorrow, too. And that's going to be the last thing I kind of look at before I go to sleep and take a little eight hour nap before I have so much to do. So much stuff still to do. I still have to go to Publix to get my. Freaking grocery shopping done. Stuff about that. Let's talk about again. I'm finally catching up to this week. I've had a very bad week. It was a very bad week. Not a good week. A very bad week. But so let's catch up with some AEW. First of all, we have a Jericho Thanksgiving celebration. The way I thank Chris Jericho. It's very simply, sir. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Um, so Virgil's there. I forget what new name he's going under. Doesn't matter. It's Virgil, though. And Ted Irvine, I guess his biological father, who actually played for the Rangers. But it's so great to be back in New York City. Hey, Ted. You're in Chicago. Oh, heel turn. I like that. And then all of a sudden... The band comes out, and the band, the band is the members of SCU. So they jump Chris Jericho because he has a match later with Scorpio Sky. We'll get to that, folks. Uh, first match to start off on the wrestling show was Best Friends with Orange Cassie dressed as a turkey. Yes. <laughs> JR had the best line because eventually he needed to do a dive off the top. Yes, we did see turkeys fly. And then he referenced WKRP in Cincinnati. That was funny. That's unless you're old like me or even older than like JR. You know, I have no clue what WKRP in Cincinnati is. Probably launched I think it did launch like one one or two careers. I forget the one DJ's name though. But I can remember the face I know. Was it Donald Sutherland? Might have been Don, Donald Sutherland. On his career. Um, so Arne Cassie dressed up as a turkey. The Lucha Brothers, they look so comfy. They're all in their sweatshirts and stuff. Um, and I'll tell you what. There was stereo super kicks. Distracting with the ref. The Lucha Brothers really know how to tag team wrestle. They're amazing. Pentagon Jr. Is so good with that backstabber. That looks vicious, folks. Uh, and that kick from Rey Mysterio. Oh, I swear. That's one of the few kicks I've ever seen swear connected right to the face. I mean, it's the neck or, or they pull it. Oh, 
someone's going to be drinking turkey through a straw tonight. Um, and of course, the sweatshirts come off, they get serious. Drop kick to the paradigm. Excalibur says some weird stuff. I honestly forget what that was a reference to. I don't know. But I think it was one of the moves that the Lucha Brothers did. I, I forget what the paradigm is. Uh, I just wrote it down because the seat side. I'm like, sounds weird. I'll write it down, though. Notes. Real, honest. I can scratch notes. Um, then Chuck Taylor, he gets the hot tag in. He comes with combos. Standing slice, red number two. That's pretty cool. Uh, Pentagon gets distracted by Turkey Cassidy. And there's a crunching on Rey Mysterio. And whoa, the best friends win. Then they, of course, all hug it out. And that's probably the best Thanksgiving they ever had. And really, it was a fun match, too. This was a good surf and turf match. And then we had... B. Priestley and Emi Sakura taking on Hiroku Shima and Chris State Lender. The thing AEW is doing, and it's somewhat good and somewhat bad, they're bringing women. I have no idea who they are. It's like they're finding local enhancement talent and they're like bringing them up to AEW levels. It's weird. So, so, P. Priestley and Emi Sakai is just funny. Uh, they, 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 again, they do dig, they do good double team moves almost by accident in spite of each other versus with each other. Uh, so, uh, Southlander. Oh, I'll tell you what, she's actually one of the better women I've seen just show up in this, which is good. And there was a chair, uh, Hikaru Shima. Hit that again, chair assisted jumping knee, which still looks utterly amazing. She's so good. She should be, she at least looks like a champion. Rio looks like a, I hate to agree with. Jim Cornette, but Rio does look like a soldier. My name is Rio, and I dance upon a stage. Oh, wait, that's Rio. It's Duran Duran, a, a band of my youth. So, Bree's just vicious. She's vicious back from her WCPW days. What culture pro wrestling? I always thought she was from England, though. I didn't know she was from, like, New Zealand. There's a whole bunch of wrestlers from New Zealand. Why didn't my one coworker ever talk about that? Granted, I'm, that would be kind of weird. How come she never turned pro? Oh, well, there's a whole bunch of other issues with that. <laughs> I was discussing with those with a friend before my truck died. But that's a whole other. Over lunch. That was funny. And... Oh, I don't know if it was from this match, but Hikaru, she, she had so many bruises all over her back. She needs to tranquilo. She needs Hobo Tom to give her some TLC. The reason is, is because I'm single. I think she is, too. All right. I, yeah, whatever. You understand. Uh, Amy Sakura, she's just a great, she's a smart heel. She, hey, listen, she does the Mexican surfboard. Very few things I'll ask for, but if you do the Mexican surfboard, this guy's going to cheer for you. Uh, she's a great heel. She wants to use the microphone. Bree Priestley does not want her, use, want her to use the microphone. Uh, eventually, Bree Priestley hits um, Statelander over the head with the mic. And then there was the oh, the wrestling move, the roll-up. 
And that's how Brie Priestley and Emi Sakura won the match. Intriguing. And of course, to start off, Brie Priestley refused to say anything on the mic. I don't know. This was actually fairly decent, though. Mainly because it was Brie Priestley gives it that very real feel. This is a cheeseburger match. Then there's a John Moxie promo. And JR, JR talks so much after the mic goes off. It's funny because I think on Fight TV, they um, play through the commercials. Or I know they do on WooTube. And you just hear like JR saying like the most nonsensical stuff. Like, are we back from break yet? Man, I don't know about this. But he's just funny though. And then Cody Rhodes returns. And whoa. Dustin Rose is smiling from above. Down his child. This is my smooth head child. Finally got him a filthy head scar. And it looks nasty. And it's from the time he did that one dive. Granted, he was going to cut himself. Not necessarily that way, though. He was going to bleed. He just did it the hard way for a change. He took on uh, Matt Nix. To squash or not to squash? That is the question. And this it was obviously to squash. Because I don't think Matt Nix got a lick of evidence in. Uh, Cody Rhodes just beat him up. It, 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 was, it was good to see Cody Rhodes back. It's a squash match with Cody Rhodes? This is a can of soup. Oh, that schedule didn't come out yet. Oh, well. On the Wednesday. I might have some breaking news. And then the, the Blade and Butcher show up. I have heard of them before. They did a suplex backstabber to poor Cody Rhodes. That was good, though. And they came out with the Sex Bunny Alley. Oh, Allie with a little like black mask and the, and the and the sexy outfit. Whoa, the blade and butcher with sex bunny Allie. Wow, but you know what this means? Whenever they partner up with New Japan, the blade butcher and sexy bunny Allie has to go has to face, um, chase the crown jewel Chase Owens. The Tokyo Pimp Tanahashi Takahashi, I can never get them straight. And real Yeah Sexy Buddy Girl Whatever she is. Muffin ass. Uh, that would just be funny. And then we have Pac versus Kenny Omega for the rematch. Uh, this was actually pretty good, though. I can't complain about this. There was a buckle bomb, and at least Pac takes it right. Uh, Kenny really just starts out really fast. He does a buckle bomb to a pop-up spine buster. Whoa, Kenny Omega starts off hot. Um, Omega goes after Pac. See, the thing is, when Kenny Omega wants to, when he goes over, so he when he goes after someone New Japan Pro Wrestling style, that's best Kenny Omega. So he went after Pac New Japan Pro Wrestling style. Uh, eventually, Pac gets to come back uh, when he did the top rope to like the top rope all the way to the floor moonsault. Um, I'm not a fan of that because you can tell they kind of land on their feet and the guy really makes an effort to catch him. Versus a classic moonsault where you're just flying on someone. I don't know. It might just be me. And then Pac just whips him with an Irish hammer. Not even the Irish whip. The Irish hammer into the ring post. <laughs> Tell you what, he started to kick Omega in the head. And Omega, he gets those funky eyes. Like, yeah, the fish shake. Yeah, yeah. Give me more. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, he starts to do his Hulk out or his Omega out. Um, and then again, he goes for a couple combination moves. 
Puck to the Super Falcons arrow. Not even the Super Falcons arrow can pin anyone, though, because no one ever gets pinned with the Super Falcon arrow. So, only two. And only because they only got two caught. Um, and then and then Kenny Omega, like, like dual rolls up Puck and, like, a crucifix at the end. Whoa, that was a weird ending. I did not see that. Therefore, this is not a filet mignon match, but this is a surf and turf match. Again, they're doing WWE tactics of the surprise roll-up. Especially with those two calibers of wrestlers. They're going to have to have another match. Probably would whenever the next pay-per-view is. Which I'll be live-streaming. My ban is up. And two more. Actually, one more day. In fact, it might be up today. Maybe. I have to check that for sure. Then we had MJF versus Eggman Adam Page for a ring. And I'll tell you what. I really wasn't impressed with the ring. My school rings look actually bigger than that. They were saying, oh, it's worth like $45,000. It's like, really? Uh, so MGF, there's no handshake, just cowboy shit going on in this match. Um, good action. It's a pretty deliberately placed. Um, MGF's, again, the heel because he just does a straight eye poke. Which is always kind of fun. Uh, Hangman and Page hits a buckshot lariat. Then Wendell. Well, uh, yeah. And then Wendell's there. Puts MJF's foot on the rope. Smart. Uh, and there was the, the double cross, whatever that is. And MJF wins. And then. Diamond Dallas Page comes out and presents this like ring. And she's like, here, take it. And it doesn't look that great. And of course, DDP looks great because he has DDP yoga. Uh, Wordle and DDP get into it a little bit. Yeah. Very lackluster. If it was like for a mid card belt, I could understand better. It was just a cheeseburger. And then let's see here. Uh, Dustin Reynolds and the Young Bucks beat the Tammy Guevara and LAX. I don't know if that's for the benefit of the crowd. Then Dark Order. Like, they, like the nerd shows up to the Dark Order thing. And there is a female creeper. There is hope for me still. Then we have in the main event of the evening. We have Scorpio Sky of SCU because Chicago is the worst town ever. Taking on the Bubble Chris Jericho. And I'll tell you what, I swear when they did a crowd shot, I swore I saw AJ Lee in the crowd. Um, I forgot what her married now. I know it's Phil something. But. Yeah, Mrs. Punk, I swear, was in that crowd. Kind of makes sense because they are in Chicago. They also didn't mention how uh, P, uh, pro, uh, pro Wrestling Tees bought tickets and were there like front row. So that's pretty cool. That's a nice little company benefit. I like that benefit. Um, but then with Chris, Chris Jericho, uh, shoulder tackles. I see a bunch of time. He plays up to the crowd. He's so good. Scorpio Sky does that drop kick. The slingshot guillotine under the guardrail by Chris Jericho looked awesome. Especially the fact that the guardrail didn't move. Let's see what else. It was very slow, methodical pace. A very Chris Jericho pace, especially now that he's kind of getting up there in age. A square few sky hit, uh, put Chris did Chris Jericho in the dragon sleeper. Hagar shows up. Of course, he gets distracted. He runs after him. Square few sky also hit a Frankenstein from the top rope. But then, 
as is the theme with this, I actually forget how it fit. The thing was, um, Codebreaker actually won the match. Scorpio Sky isn't good enough for the Judith's effect? Eh. So Chris Jericho wins. It was a fun match. It's a good cheeseburger match. Overall, it's hard to say AEW does anything bad besides the women's division. Although if they have that female keeper there, yes. I'll say overall, it was a good cheeseburger of a show. So it'll be interesting with content like this every week. I mean, there's a lot. And now it's time, now that we're coming back from our break, it's time to talk about some NWA. Wow, NWA is nothing without Jim Cornette for some reason. Uh, so that was 49 and 50. So they'll start deleting space on my computer. Uh, for the most part, just kind of, this was a very recap heavy show. I know, I think. Next Saturday is going to be their pay per view. So if this, I don't know if this is like the lead up to the go home show, but I don't know. It wasn't good. It's, I mean, if it's going to be like this, I'm not even going to bother covering it anymore. Because there was only one wrestling match scene. Wait. There was only one wrestling match for this entire show. Oh, that's not good. Uh, it was a, there was a whole Molina recap, whole Commander recap, really a whole recap of the past show. Then Eli Drake comes out, cuts a promo. I'm not some guy who twitches his eye, who puts his who puts his eyebrow up and drops an elbow. Ooh, I don't come out, give everyone the finger, and drink beer. Huh? I don't come out with a spark to and go. Whoo! Oh, the crowd was stunned at that. I dare Eli Drake mock people. I guess he's going to be taking on Nick Aldis, though. Oh, no, he's taking on uh, Ken, uh, Ken Anderson, I think, for the Into the Fire, which I will be covering. And I'll probably do that in my standard fashion, and I'll figure out stuff next week for that. Uh, then there was a lot of Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa was showing training for MMA. And it seems so hard for wrestlers to get into MMA and actually be successful unless they've done it in the past. I think a lot of it has to do with from muscle memory because they're used to pulling punches. You don't pull punches in MMA. You have to do things right or the guy's going to laugh at you and break your own arm. Again, hey, she does the training, which is a lot more than I can say for, for my fat at, my, my fat Heidi. But uh, yeah, it, was, it was interesting. And then it was uh, Savannah Evans and Danny Teals. Ah, um, Barry Bratworth. Boy, you know, he, boy, you know him as, as Holiday Harry. And I come from land of effing holidays. And my business partner is Barry Bratworth. Actually, I can't do that because that's gimmick infringement for, from fuck wrestling with Steven Larson. Like, so I shouldn't do that. Or I'd owe them a penny. Or, or they'd copyright violate me. Sounds bad. Copyright violate me. Um, then the mark with Aaron Stevens takes on Zane Dawson with his brother there. I forget what the brother's name is. But this was an empty arena match. That's not good. Uh, Zane, he just looks like a biker. And that's the thing with NWA is that the team they took people out of Southern bars. I guess they found this team from a biker bar. Uh, the question mark, he does his judo chops, all his karate, and then the Mongrovian spike, whatever that is, version of the old Oriental spike. Just kind of very brawling. I mean, the question mark did hit a missile dropkick, which was probably the only other wrestling move besides the Mongrovian spike. Um, then, of course, it was, it was a mass versus Shakespeare reading, so Dawson lost. The Shakespeare reading was. Better than the match. 
and the fact that Aaron Stevens got physically ill just made actually the whole idea of reading Shakespeare funny. This was still him so much. And then there was a Melina interview. Besides Melina's fat PH80 bootay, I never got into Melina. Again, besides the fact that she had boobs and a butt. Again, WWE Attitude Era. That's how women were. Boobs. But it's all good then. Then they showed Melissa Cervantes' loss as an MMA fighter. Kind of feel bad for her. She did all this training for it. Sucks to lose. The other woman she was facing probably had a plethora of experiment of experience in front of a big crowd. I don't think Thunder Rosa as she was ever in a fight, per se, in wrestling matches. Uh, it's different, though. And then they cut to what to expect next week, and we'll see what happens for Into the Fire pay-per-view. And that was NWA. It only took me six, five-plus minutes to talk about an hour-long show. That's not good. That's going to make me not want to watch. There was one match. It was a ham sandwich. <laughs> Therefore, this is a ham sandwich of a show. And that's it. Um, tomorrow, I get to SmackDown Review. I finally have a Sunday off. Or Saturday off. It's going to feel so good. Sunday I'll probably cover Starcade or whatever they shit whatever they decide to show up Starcade. I don't know. I'll actually probably do my Starcade predictions probably tomorrow nightish. So yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for watching again. If you want to be thoroughly entertained, check out the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League here on my YouTube channel. I just put up the new Drunk Skiving episode, and everyone else, have a good night, and I hope